right, this is the first in my Memory of Chaos series where I'll be going over the first fight using four star units only and using as many of the free to play units as I can. This is not a free to play challenge by any means, so I'm not gonna use a free to play unit if they're detrimental to the fight. Do you want to enter the forgotten? For the first fight, it's gonna be Fire Trailblazer and Asta. And these are great units because they can stun lock the decaying shadow once she enters her charging state. Um, this is really great because she can't do any more damage throughout the rest of the fight, and Trailblazer Fire plus Asta are really great at weakness breaking enemies. For the next unit will go with Downhang because both bosses are weak to the wind element, so he's just a great DPS here. For the last unit, it is going to be QQ. He's just an amazing unit for the stage because of these imaginary weavers. You want to charge up her ult from the first fight and then you use it on the second fight to weakness break these guys and prevent them from taking any actions. Because if you've tried this challenge before and went into the decaying shadow fight first, you would know these things hit very hard. Now for the second battle, we're going to go with Sushang and Tingyan because the bosses do share a physical weakness so Sushang is just an amazing unit here and with Tingyan she does enough damage to pretty much be the sole DPS. March 7th will be your next unit because a lot of the ads have ice weaknesses and everything Gepard summons has ice weaknesses so her ice ultimate is going to be very useful here. The last unit, it will be Natasha to make sure none of our units die and we don't lose a star. Now, let's get started. When choosing an enemy, you're going to want to go with the Guardian Shadow first because as I said earlier, the Decaying Shadow has these imaginary weavers which deal a really big amount of damage at the start of the battle and if you don't have the Gepard Technique Shield, to give everyone a shield, or you don't have a very powerful healer to recover, going into the Guardian Shadow fight after that can be very difficult. Will preservation. This will strengthen our position. The redemption. So vigilant. this boss has a pretty simple pattern. It's a three, three um attack pattern, where she'll start out with her lightning recollection into a ban. And then if all of your units move and remove the bands before her next turn, you will get hit with another ban into Lightning Condemnation, where it's a burst ability. And then the last two attacks are another Lightning Recollection and Thunderstorm Condemnation. This is a very powerful attack, and you want to make sure that you have Trailblazer Shields up for it. No interest in uh, we do not want to get hit with the bands at this point in the game because we don't have any shields from Trailblazer right now, and without a healer, that can be very, very risky. Lance ablaze! Lance! So attacking the ants is actually really good because once both of them are dead, the boss cannot cast Tranquil Ban anymore, so you don't have to worry about being counterattacked for attacking the boss. Everything is ordained. Oh stars, give these trailblazers your blessing. Lance at the ready. <laughs> So we do want to save up our quantum ultimate for the next battle so that we can weakness break the ads at the start. And with this battle we will not have enough time to charge it up again. The truth of life is sanctuary is but a vision. For your sins. 
guard. No manners, huh? Hold your breath. Not a scratch. Fighting is pure. And there we go. Now for the second battle. Again, you did want to save up that quantum ultimate, and fortunately, we were able to charge up the rest of our ultimates because we didn't need them to end that fight. Will of preservation. This will strengthen our found your weakness. Luck of the draw. Please and victory. Lance ablaze. Lance forward. Time to get vigilant. One thing to note is you do not want to accidentally witness break the boss before her third turn where she starts charging up because that will mess things up and will make it harder to stun lock her. <laughs> the truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Everything is worth those stars. Give these trailblazers your blessing. My turn. Lance at the ready. I've no interest in conflict. Who invited? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> And now we don't need it to worry about taking any more damage for the rest of the fight, because once she's in this state, once she's weakness broken, she'll just continuously recast this ability and cannot exit this loop. Too late to repent. No manners, huh? huh? <laughs> Truth of life is sanctuary is but a vision. Break. Wow. <laughs> Luck of the draw. Please and victory. <laughs> no manner. <laughs> All right, now on to the second battle. Quick. These fights aren't too different in difficulty. I prefer Silvermane first because he's a lot weaker than Gapar, so it's a lot easier to finish him up. And you can get a more accurate feel of how many turns you need when you're in the Gapard fight. So we'll charge up Tion's ultimate to full and then initiate battle. So I do have a limit break on my Sushang, so she doesn't spend any skill points when using her skill on a weakness broken enemy, which is a pretty nice skill, but this isn't a very um, skill point hungry team, so you can do without it. Because, yeah, we only need to use Tingyan's buff every few turns because it does have, I think, a three turn duration. Personally, I wouldn't recommend attacking these summons because you can usually kill the boss before you get through both their HP bars, 
unless you're using an erudition unit that can just nuke the entire stage. Told you I could fight. Now we have the Gepard fight, and with 32 cycles remaining, I'm pretty confident that we can finish this up. We'll use team and support to get our ultimate, and initiate the battle again. Save March 7th's alt for when the enemies recover their toughness bars. Just a little something. Think nothing of it. Thanks a lot. Gotta try hard yep. sometime. Watch this awesome move. Yeah, what can we do? Seeing I should have upgraded my Tingyun's energy recharger up a little bit more since we're always just a little bit short. Okay, honestly, that was a little bit too close for comfort. And there we go, three stars. This fight is pretty easy once you have pretty good DPS for this. Dan Hang and Su Shang are my best recommendations. Of course, you if you have the five stars, they can just carry through even though they don't have the elemental advantages. All right, let's quickly go over the characters. Fire Trailblazer. This is great to increase the likelihood of being attacked. We want to get all the defense ones, probably the passive and the traces, and this guy for some mitigation. Relics, you're going to want the Knight of Purity Palace for increased defense and shield strength. You're going to want defense percent, speeds, and energy regeneration if you've got the rope. Uh, as many limit breaks as you can get, you'll probably have a fair amount by the time you're taking on these challenges, but I wouldn't say any of them are required for the first stage. For Dan Hang, you probably want to put the most investment into your DPS, so you'll want them at the level cap that you're at. I want the Sword Plate Light Cone. It's a pretty nice light cone, but cruising the Stellar Sea and River Flows in Spring are both free light cones that you can get as other options, or you can just use whatever you've obtained so far. Traces, you're gonna want to get this faster than light. It increases the speed, which is what you want when you're trying to finish as fast as possible. Uh, you're gonna want to upgrade the ultimate and the skill, but also just try to spread your levels as much as your resources allow. 
Relics. Eagle of the Twilight Line. You're gonna want that so that you're moving more often after casting your ultimate because you just want to speed up the fights. Crit rate, speed, wind, and attack boosts are pretty standard stats here. And for the limit breaks, I do have one limit break, but it's only 12% to enemies greater than 50% HP, which you can pretty much get with sub stats, so I wouldn't say it was super um, important, but it's just nice to have. Asta, I did not invest in her at all. I put a light cone to increase her energy regeneration. No traces. And just whatever I could fit on her with the relics. You're gonna want speed and uh, energy regeneration primarily because for the most part she's just trying to move fast and regenerate as much energy for her ultimate as possible while weakness breaking the enemies. For the traces, you can upgrade your ultimate and skill for better buffs. And for the limit breaks, both these are nice, but I wouldn't say must have for this stage. For the last unit, QQ, my most invested unit because she stole the gear from my strongest unit. She's only level 60 because I'm lacking the resources at the moment, but she does have the seriousness of breakfast light cone, the free light cone that you can get from the memory of chaos shop. It's just a nice light cone because you're guaranteed 14% here from killing two enemies per stage. For traces. Just try to increase them as much as your resources allow. I mostly just used her for her alt, so I focused on the alt stance. But yeah, you're going to want to pick up the quantums, the attacks, and everything that your resources allow. Genius of Brilliant Stars is probably the best relic set, especially since one of the bosses was quantum weak. And the boss that was quantum weak also conveniently had a mighty Gation buff, so it's just really nice. For your stance, you're probably going to want crit rate, an attack, or a speed here, a quantum damage boost, an attack, or maybe even an energy regeneration here so that she's ulting more often and getting that enhanced basic guaranteed more often. Limit breaks, these are all nice to increase alt damage and um, a little bit of energy regeneration, but I wouldn't say required. That contains Sushang. A lot of investment because she was the main DPS of the second team and kind of carried this entire fight because if we didn't get the second stages done real fast, we would not have met the 28 turn threshold. For the light cone, I want cruising in the stellar scene. It's a pretty good free light cone, especially for the stats it gives. But of course you can use the um, river flows in spring if you want to use the other free light cone or whatever you've obtained. Traces. Just upgrade all the attacks you can, this bonus ability is nice for some increased damage, and of course all the ultimate and skills for more damage because those are her main sources of DPS. I want the champion of straight wise boxing because it's really easy to stack up this 4 piece because she's acting I think 2-3 to three times in the first turn if you're using Tingyan to charge up her ultimate, so she's getting her first attack, the ultimate, and then the follow-up attack from the ultimate, and then she's boosted to immediately move in the next cycle, so it's really easy to stack that up. For the stats, you're going to want crit rate, attack, physical, and attack. Um, if you have speed boots, I would say those might be better, but I have not rolled those unfortunately. The physical damage is pretty big here because she only gets attack percent in her traces, and stacking up too much attack is detrimental if you have no physical damage boost. For limit breaks, the first one is great in certain teams, but our team wasn't very skill point hungry, so I wouldn't say it's required. Second one's just damage mitigation, but I don't feel like that was much of an issue. Next, best unit was Ting Yun, our main damage dealer. You just want high attack stats because she gives attack based on her own. Uh, I went with this light cone to further increase allies actions. And with traces you can probably upgrade her ultimate and skill. And this is a nice one to increase her own speed and pick up any of the attack percents you can get. Probably the musketeer of wild wheat set is the best for the bonus attack percent, so speed and basic attack damage isn't bad. You can get 24% attack from the space ceiling station, and she does actually have some pretty good speed, considering I don't have speed boots on her. For your armor, you're probably going to want attack, 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 and an energy regeneration. 
Alternatively, you can go with the speed for the boots if you want her to be more fast. This is a pretty good limit break, I'm not going to lie, because it makes her DPS move more often. But if you had speed boots on your Sushang, you reach about the same results I did, because I don't have those. Our 7th, we mostly just use for ultimate to weakness break the enemies around the bosses. So, I wouldn't say her gear matters too much. I have the We Are Wildfire, which is nice if you're not running a healer, since it heals in between stages. Uh, traces, you can upgrade the skill and grab the defense some buffs that are laying around to further increase your healing, because he does provide a pretty bulky shield. You're gonna want Knight of Purity Palace for the defense increase and the shield boost, because she does give a pretty big shield, so having a shield boost just makes that shield ginormous. Uh, you're probably gonna want an effect hit rate or defense, a speed, defense, and probably defense or energy regeneration if you have a free rope. Limit breaks, I have two of them. The second one's nice if you're not running healer since it gives a shield to the lowest health ally, and the first one does regenerate a little bit of energy, which does help. But if you had an energy regeneration rope, you could make up for it. And the last unit, Natasha. Oh, I forgot to put relics on her. Okay, um. Yeah, so for the light cone, we went with post op conversion, conversation, for some increased energy regeneration and outgoing healing. Traces, you probably want to upgrade your ultimate and um, skill if you've got it. This is a nice bonus ability for more healing. Relics, um, yeah, probably Musketeer of Wild Wheat for increased speed. We can also go with that healing set for the bonus ability point at the start of battle, especially since our Su Shang kind of went out swinging because she got so many uh, turns off and used a lot of skill points in that first turn. For your stats, you would probably want um, outgoing healing or HP percent, a speed. Probably an HP percent and energy regeneration because her ult is definitely a great source of healing. For the limit breaks, I only have one. This didn't really come into effect in this battle, I don't think, so I wouldn't say it's a must have, but it is a nice um, oh no button for when she gets uh, reduced too low. And that is all for the characters. I will try to get out the second stage as soon as I can. And I'll try to use all 4 star units for all 10 stages if possible. If there ever comes a time where I need to use 5 star units, it'll be because it's just at the point of the game we're at. And I will try to record a new one with 4 star units in the future once we're further into the game. Thanks for watching and look forward to that next video coming out in the near future.